Hi, welcome to this fastener on creating time. My name is Sherry Wilson with Genius Communication. I'm honored that you have signed up for this webinar. Webinar, And let's go ahead and jump in because I want to get through it as fast as possible because if you're anything like me, you do not have time to waste. So we're going to focus on three main areas to create time and then we'll go into the three ways to do that. Make sure that you have downloaded and printed off your time creation strategy sheets because you will use those in part two of this training. The first part to focus on is decluttering your time. A lot of people say that they don't have enough time or I'll get to it when I have more time, but the fact is you don't need more time. You just need a way to cut through the clutter. This statement, clutter comes from assigning everything the same importance, literally changed my life. I used that, that very sentence, that philosophy, that idea to do an incredible, uh, effective and speedy process of creating a 15 hour curriculum in five months. I expected it to take me a year, but it only took me five months using these very principles that I'm sharing with you today. So clutter comes from assigning everything the same importance. Please realize that on your to-do list, not everything is as important as some things and you either need to, um, uh, delegate some of those things or you can do the techniques I'll show you in a little bit or both. The second area of focus is multitasking. Multitasking is a myth. The brain cannot multitask. This is a scientific fact. Instead, what it does is it constantly switches between tasks and this constant switching is the number one source of stress and fatigue in the workplace. So let me give you a couple thoughts on multitasking. In a recent creative group survey, they basically wanted to know if people thought multitasking greatly improved productivity all the way down to does it greatly hinder productivity. As you can see, 41% thinks it improves productivity, uh, some think it has no impact, some think that it hinders and some actually think that it greatly improves productivity. So you can see that 99% of the population uh, in this study thinks that multitasking has a positive benefit on uh, productivity but 1% actually got it right and they know that it actually hinders productivity. So let me give you the reality. Productivity drops 40% when you multitask. Also, it drops the IQ 10 to 15 points. Now, for women, the IQ drops about 10 points, but it's more dramatic for men. Typically, they experience a 15 point to, uh, uh, drop in IQ that can sometimes take some men down to the average age range of an eight-year-old. This IQ drop in both men and women is similar to staying up all night or smoking marijuana. Multitasking also causes the average employee to lose 2.3 hours a day due to interruptions and distractions. It also costs the U.S. economy $650 billion, yes, billion in wasted productivity, and just checking your emails during the work week costs 11 hours of that 40-hour work week. The constant switching is also addictive. Every time you finish a tiny task like sending an email, answering a text message, or posting on Facebook, your brain gets what I call a dollop of dopamine. It then wants more of this dopamine because it's a pleasure hormone. It literally drives you and um, causes your brain to seek out other ways to get more dopamine. So you actually begin to self-interrupt to get more. And what's crazy is research has shown that those that do this think they're getting a lot done, but in reality, they're not. So you want to avoid not only being interrupted, but self-interruption. And then the third uh, area of focus is balance is bunk. There is no such thing. 
I want to give you the idea, the thought, the philosophy that there are seasons in life where you're going to be busier than others. And so in the next part of this fastener, which we're about to get into, I'm going to show you how to settle on those things that you cannot compromise on during those busy seasons. That way um, you don't feel bad and you don't feel guilty. So no. There are times that life is going to throw a bunch of stuff at you and there's no way you can avoid it. Or maybe you're in the middle of that next product launch, that uh, Instagram campaign, that Facebook ad campaign, or whatever it is. Maybe there's been some personal things come up in your life or some life changes and there's no way you can avoid it. So give yourself grace and give yourself the permission to be busy during this time. And then, of course, we'll get those absolutes ready for you uh, in part two. Okay, so three ways to create time. Let's dive right in. Grab your worksheets. Step number one. What is the one thing you can do in your life that would mean the most to you such that by doing it, everything else would be easier or unnecessary? This is from the book called The One Thing by Gary Keller, the founder of Keller Williams Realty. This question literally defined 2016 for me when I knew that I wanted to create a phenomenal course. I wanted to do it within a year, and so I literally filtered every decision, every Every activity through this question and basically the question was how can I use my main thing of getting that course ready so that anything else that does not add to that goal is unnecessary or there are things that would make it easier to do you use this main thing like I said to filter all decisions and activities through now I like to get my one thing either in year uh, segments, maybe even five year segments, but I work in 90 day increments. I don't always have a one thing goal. Sometimes life is going uh, along just fine. I am in maintenance and that's okay. But when I have a specific thing that I must get done to get me closer to my main goal, I will then create that main thing and then I will filter everything through it. So I have a main goal to use the income from my course Genius Communication for um, a vision, a, a goal I have that's probably a good five to ten years down the road. However, in the meantime, I've got my Genius Communication course done. Now I need to revamp my worksheets. That is now my one thing. The course is created. Now my one thing has switched to those worksheets. So all of my activities, all of my decisions are going to filter through getting that done, meaning everything else is unnecessary that does not work toward that goal. Now, of course, we know that we have life in general. There are things that we must do, and I'm going to show you how that works. So don't panic, but this is step number one. So write on your worksheet what is your main thing, whether it's a 90-day increment, a a year increment, five year increment, or 10 year increment, write down that main thing that you want to um, do in your lifetime or in the near future, and then move on to step number two. So, step number two is set priority and productivity. Priority provides clarity on the one thing you should do today to get closer to your main thing. In other words, Step number one, that main thing, now you're going to find out the one thing that you need to do today to get closer to it. Productivity is designing your day so that the one thing you do is done with complete focus. Okay, so now we get back to the multitasking is a myth. So this step goes with that. So you set priority and productivity by doing what I call a brain dump. Actually, a lot of people call it a brain dump. Okay, so on your worksheets, you will see on page one uh, an area where you can basically create a list of every single thing you need to do today. It can be personal and professional. So uh, post uh, Instagram and Facebook, take out the trash, vacuum, pick up my kids from school, cook supper, meet with that client at one o'clock, whatever it is, write down everything you have to get done today. Then, once you're done with that, take 20% of those things and make a new list, okay? So those 20% are the must uh, 
to do's that you'll have to do today, but also they might um, be the things that you can do that will get you closer to your main thing. Then out of those 20%, I want you to select the one task that gets you closer to your main thing and do it first by time blocking. Okay, so remember multitasking is a myth. Whenever you are focused on um, a project, a task, it takes you 25 minutes to get into undivided focus or what people call the zone. When people or distractions, text messages, emails, etc., pull your attention away from that task, it takes 23 minutes to get back into focus. So, my question to you is, do you have 25 minutes to spend in your day today of undivided focus for that one task that will get you closer to your main goal? The optimum level is four hours, but I will tell you that whenever I was developing my course, it was rare that I could work for four hours straight. So typically I would work uh, for about one to two hours, sometimes three, and then every once in a while I would have those days where I could devote an entire day to it. Now, for a lot of people that work in office setting, or maybe you have children, or when you're at work, you know, that's all you're going to do, but your main thing is a personal goal and you may be afraid you won't have time for it later. Let me tell you, get that block in a, it, you know, in your calendars. So like if you have kids, can you get up 25 minutes later? Can you go to the bathroom and have someone watch your kids and hide yourself in there? Like maybe your spouse and get that one thing done. Uh, can you trade out some, you know, time equity with other people that have children as well? Think creatively, okay? So look on your worksheets where you've got the three challenges and solutions. So I want you to put what you think would be the number one challenge to your time block. It might be kids. It might be cell phone and phone calls. It might be whatever. And I find that people are really resistant at this stage, especially if they work, because they're, they're like, there is no way I can block out or shut my office door for 25 minutes and not take phone calls and not check emails. You know what? You've got 25 minutes where you can do that. That is a fallacy. In the One Thing book, I loved this story. There was an executive that was about to be fired because they didn't think that he was accomplishing the goals for which they hired him. He was devastated, but when he began to analyze how he worked, he realized that he had an open door policy. Anyone could come in at any time and interrupt him. And he also found himself um, basically doing the job of the people that were hired under him to do that very job. So he decided to start the time blocking at work, he focused on the reason the people hired him, and he found two things. Number one, he kept his job and he was promoted, and number two, he discovered that his team, they actually had to figure things out, and it unlocked their potential. So, don't believe the fallacy that you're absolutely needed at all times. Give your team the freedom of discovering that they are actually very capable, and if you have people under you that are not capable, it might be time to find some people that are. But sometimes we just don't give people a chance. So, what's the biggest challenge for you to go uninterrupted and then write three possible solutions to that, decide on them today uh, per challenge, okay? All right, and then step, step three, the final step is decide on the absolutes. This goes along with the balances bunk focused area. So this step addresses the balance issue during seasons of increased time and attention to your main thing. These absolutes might be your spiritual life, family time, gym, whatever it is. For me, my spiritual life, um, hanging out with my husband and going to the gym are extremely important to me. So this step requires saying no to anything or anyone that doesn't get you closer to the main thing or is not an absolute. For example, I'm not going to hang out with my friends a lot when I am in that season of needing to focus. So lunches, going out to eat dinner, hang, you know, going to coffee shops, no. If it doesn't get me closer to my main thing, I'm not doing it. However, 
Coffee every day between five and six in the evening with my husband is an absolute. Carving out time to go to the gym is an absolute. I have to have gym time. Having my spiritual time of prayer and reading is an absolute. So for some of you, especially with your personality, you will need to learn to say no. My personality doesn't have any problem saying no. <laughs> but for some of you, that can be really hard. If you're a personality that you're an extrovert, and having time with your friends and social and team activities, then make that one of your absolutes and put that in your days. And also, when you're starting this new journey of creating time and you're getting rid of the clutter and you're no longer multitasking and blocking your time, don't bite off big chunks. Maybe two to three days a week of having time blocking is all you need. It's better than not doing it at all. The main thing is set your priority, design your day based on that priority, and make sure that you have times of increased focus on that one task with no distractions. That includes your phone and your computer. So you may have to learn to say no to things for a time. When I started working on my course, I um, delegated my housework and... Um, like I said, I didn't have very many social activities and I didn't work on my yard either, which um, did bother me a little bit because I like working in my yard and also I had to learn uh, to get used to chaos. In other words, my floor wasn't going to be spotless and I was going to have a little bit of clutter around my house, but I had a goal and I got used to it, to the chaos and the changes. And now I have plenty of time. Well, I don't know if I have plenty of time, but I definitely have more time. Okay, so one of the things that is a big hindrance to um, our time management is social media phone use. I discovered from using an app called um, Moment, I believe, yeah, Moment on my iPhone, that I was using 65% more than the average person that used that app of my phone. However, I was recording um, some trainings using my phone and some other stuff, so I don't think I'm a, as bad as I uh, came up this past I think it was 11 days, but in 11 or 12 days, I had 56 hours of phone use. So go ahead and see how much time you're spending on your phone because it more than likely is more than you realize. And also there's an app for Android users called Fever. And there's even apps that will lock you out of your phone for however long you tell it to lock you out so that you can focus. And also, when you're working on your computer, go ahead and shut down your email so that you don't get any of those dings because those dings or those notification sounds literally cause dopamine to be released and you'll be distracted. And please join our private Facebook group for weekly training tips and inspiration. You can go to GeniusCommunication.org where you got this uh, fastener and click um, private Facebook group. We'd love to have you. I do live trainings there every week and it's a lot of fun. Okay, so um, again, you this uh, fastener is yours. The uh, strategy sheets are yours. You can, um, you know, Come back and watch this anytime. I think you can even download it uh, using you know some apps that allow you to do that. But please grab my free three-part video training. You're already part of our family here, and it's called Persuade Without Saying a Word. I take some of the key components of my main course, Genius Communication, the same course that I go in and I teach businesses to um, the, the, the things in that course for personality, body language, digital strategies, things like that, that I've literally, I've had real estate agents um, double their sales. I've got another company that they have increased their sales. Um, I don't remember what the percentage was, but I know that they've been averaging eleven to $12,000 a month more. Uh, since they've done my training, it is powerful, it works. And so if you want a taste of it, Go ahead and grab Persuade without saying a word, and I promise it will not be a waste of your time. And that is um, it for this training. Thank you so much for being a part of it. I appreciate it, and I look forward to next week's uh, Fastenar, uh, or next month's Fastenar on the elevator speech. Until then, have a great month. I will see you then.